Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Alexia if you're new here and if you're not, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a video on popular makeup items that I not necessarily hate but don't really love. Some of them I don't like at all, like at all at all. And some of them are just kind of like I wish they could be better but they're super popular in the makeup world and people seem to really like them. There seems to be like a general consensus that this item is A1 from day one but in my opinion some of them fall a little short or a little flat. So if you're excited for this video give it a thumbs up and let's just get right into it. Okay so the first item that I'm going to talk about is something that I don't think I've ever used on my channel because it just didn't work for me and this is the beauty bakery cake face concealer now I'm pretty sure that a lot of people like it and that it has an actual good formula but I've never really been able to try it just because the color the shade range is not that good I know it's a black owned brand and that it is catering to darker skin women but they do advertise as like they have a shade for everyone and I totally disagree I got the shade don't give a frap and I believe that this is the second to lightest shade and the reason I got this one is because I did use their color match system and the undertone sound right so I should have got the lightest shade but I also I just didn't want to spend like another 20 or 20 I believe it's like 20 to 30 dollars I can't remember if it's 20 or 28 it's in that range though and I didn't want to waste another 20 plus dollars on something that wouldn't work for me I've honestly never used it because like I just want to swatch it and show you guys like how dark that is. So that is super dark that can never be used to highlight on my skin and it couldn't even be used to just cover stuff up. And I'm kind of bronzed up right now so it looks like it can maybe work but I guarantee you it's way too dark. I've actually heard a few complaints about the formula also that it dries really fast and it dries like a liquid lipstick. So it's apparently a little challenging to use even though I think I tested it out once with my, with my makeup and I just it didn't match my skin at all I if I have a fake tan on I'm pretty sure I could get this to work but I really don't fake tan that much anymore so I just leave it in my drawer just in case I ever do want to use it while I fake tan but I really think that they need to fix their shade range and I mean I guess I have the opposite criticism that most black women have of other brands is they need to get some people of color on their brand to kind of go over shades and stuff that are going to work with deeper skin whereas I think Beauty Bakery really needed to get some really light people really pale people to at least test their makeup on because this is not it this is like light skin not pale skin and i I've, I've seen other reviews with the lightest shade which i can't remember what it's called and those people even complained that it was too dark for their skin tone so it's just a shade range i really wanted to like this because i really like beauty bakery but just doesn't work for me. The next item that I'm going to be talking about is the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder. Now, don't get me wrong, I really like the finish of this product. If you use enough, if you use too much, I don't like the finish. It gets really cakey easily, so you need to go in with a lighter hand. But the thing I don't like about this is, is it's a little too yellow in the undertone. I feel like this should have been, because they have different shades. I believe they have three. They have like a translucent just translucent 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 medium and translucent deep but I think that this needs to be translucent light and then they need a translucent like really light or fair because this has slightly of a yellow undertone and I have kind of a neutral undertone but a little bit more leaning cool and this is too yellow for under my eyes I mean it's it doesn't look like a banana powder or anything like that under my eyes but it definitely doesn't give that brightening effect and looks a little weird at first until I get all of my other makeup on and kind of blend everything together. If I just use this though, it it just looks a little yellow on my skin tone. As you can see, like in the camera, it looks really good and really pale, but my lights are lightening it a little bit slightly, but on my skin, it just is a little bit yellow. Let me see if I can show y'all what I mean. I don't know if you guys can see that it just kind of has like a hint of yellow to it and my skin is really fair and it also is ugh, it feels so soft though I do really like the formula my skin is really fair and a little bit 
neutral cool cool tone slightly more cool toned leaning so i definitely just wish they had another shade that was more for fair skin and this was considered for like light skin and then they had the medium and the deep but i do love the formula i love how light and airy it is but it's just the coloring that makes it a little off for me the next item that i kind of have issues with but i'm trying to learn to love and see if i really feel the way that I feel about it but as of now the ColourPop no filter foundation I just don't love this foundation I'm actually wearing it right now and surprisingly it does look pretty good today it blended out a lot easier than when I first got it I actually have a review on that I will link it above but when I first got it it just had a lot of issues blending and looking streaky and the coverage wasn't that great it seems to work a little bit better on my skin now than it did a few months ago so that's why I have recently included it in my monthly makeup basket and why I am wearing it again today because I wanted to see how I truly felt about this and test it out again but from my memory and other times of using it it is streaky and it's not that full coverage with a sponge so it was like I couldn't really get a happy middle ground of it not looking streaky and full coverage if I used a brush it would have streaks but it would be full coverage and if I patted out the streaks with a sponge it would just remove the product so this product I want to love it because I love ColourPop but it's just kind of a miss for me the next item if you have watched my channel at all you probably knew that this was gonna be in it and this is a Natasha Denona as a whole like every eyeshadow that I've ever tried from her not just the gold palette I just didn't feel like getting all of my palettes but I actually have a review on this one and the tropic palette and the mini star palette so I will link those all below but I don't hate Natasha Denona eyeshadows I do just feel that they're just kind of lackluster people love them and rave about them but I just have issues with the lasting quality of them and I have issues with um when I put the mattes on my eye like this deep brown color I will like pat it in with a fluffy brush and blend and then the creases in my eye you will see a clear line of my skin tone like just cut through the blending that I did so there's that issue with that and then they don't seem to last throughout the day very well for me I can wear these for like eight hours and the, at the end of the day all the differing colors will just blend together into one kind of like smoky look but they just don't last that well for me and I can never seem to do a good cut crease with any of the Natasha Denona palettes it's so weird that I cannot like build it up I don't know they're just not my favorite and I definitely wouldn't recommend. I don't want to say wasting because so many people don't think of it as a waste, but I wouldn't recommend buying a Natasha Denona palette. You can get just as good, if not better, for a lot cheaper. And I actually have a video comparing Natasha Denona on one eye and ColourPop on another eye and it was the gold palette. I will link that above um, because ColourPop, spoiler alert, a lot better. So I don't know. I just don't love Natasha Natasha Denona shadows. I'm not going to return them because I've had them for too long and I will be using them every now and then, but I probably will never buy another Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette just because I don't feel like the quality really matches up the height. Next item on my list is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit 4 palette, volume 4 palette. That's kind of a long name. Um, so you can, you can see everything. So the reason that I don't really love this palette a lot is because, okay, here's the thing. I love all the shades in here. They all perform beautifully. I actually love the product, but the amount you get for the price that it is, it is $80 for, in this whole thing, like less than half of an ounce and it's $80 and in their regular size palettes where it's just kind of like the brick I'll insert a little picture right here it is $60 I believe for like over an ounce or at least half of an ounce for one of those and this is like $20 more for less than that so I really don't think it's worth it the amount of product that you get nonetheless I love every single shade in here and I think they're all beautiful and perform great I just would recommend buying the individual ones like a bronzer and a blush or a bronzer and a highlighter or a bronzer and just like the finishing powder and you get a much better deal my next item that everyone seems to really like and I'm kind of just like pretty but like that great is the Fenty Beauty how many carrots highlighter 
Now I know, don't, don't yell at me in the comments because I know people love this. And Tati was actually the one who convinced me to get this. Now, it is really pretty. It's pretty, okay? I'll admit it, but I don't love how freaking glittery it is. Like, I'm just gonna rub some of that right there. And you know what I love about it is I love that it's got that like wet look to it, but I just do not like how it's so glittery. And on the face, you can really see the glitteriness. And I just wish it just had that filmy wet look without all of that glitter. It would just be perfect if it didn't have the glitter aspect. But I mean, like I said in the beginning of this video, I don't really hate most of these items. There's just aspects to them that I just, I wish was a little better or a little different or doesn't fit my needs or doesn't fit me. <laughs> but I just wish that this was the shiny part of it, but not so glittery because honestly it just looks like a bunch of glitter on my face and I don't mind a glittery high glittery glittery yeah I don't mind a glittery highlight but this is just too much glitter with like literally no other aspect to it and I feel like it would be better just for all over the body so that is my reason for just being a little less impressed with this and also it's $38 it's more than all of the other kilowatt highlighters which that's kind of crazy okay only three more items to go my next one is also Fenty Beauty and I just threw this in because I wanted to mention it this is the Fenty Beauty Mademoiselle color Grisilda. This is one of the testers. Now I've only really tried this one, but I just have to say I don't really like this formula. It is not very pigmented. Like I had to go over like eight times to get that pigment. If you just do one swipe, you can see how kind of like see-through it is. I also, what I don't like about it is it just seeps. Like it does not stay in the lines. It's a little bit too creamy to where it doesn't stay in the lines. You have to use a lip liner and I'm not about lip liners. Like why would I wear a lip liner and then a lipstick when I could literally just use a liquid lipstick and not have to deal with all of that? That's just my thoughts on that. I do like the color and I like all the colors available. It's just the formula is a little too slippery for me. The next item is the Becca Ultimate Coverage 24 hour hour foundation. I thought it was hour wear foundation, but yeah. So the Becca Ultimate Coverage foundation, <sighs> look, I wanted to love this foundation so much. I watched Nikki Tutorial's video where she actually wore it for 24 hours and it looked beautiful on her skin, but then again, she has like perfect skin, so you can't really trust that when you don't also have perfect skin. But I actually have a Take 5 episode on this where I tested it out for five days in a row and then I filmed it on the fifth day and wore it for eight hours and all of that. I'll link that above. It's crazy because in my take five episode, it actually looked okay. And the reason that it looked okay is because I used the Becca First Light Priming Filter Primer, something like that, the little purple bottle. And it looks really good with that. But if you use any other primer, it just like catches onto the skin. It just doesn't look good. I even have another video where I, where I caught putting it on where it looked so bad and I linked it in my take five episode of this in a card where it was in that other video and I linked it so you can see how bad it looked if if you want to see if you care about this foundation but if you're gonna get this I don't hate this foundation because I did find that primer and it looks good with that Becca primer but like you have to get that primer for this to look good at least for me I have to use that primer if I don't it either looks really streaky or it catches onto like every little pore and you can just it looks like my skin is dry and just cracky I, it's crazy looking <laughs> it's crazy but I'm glad I found a primer that I do like this with but I don't love this because I don't necessarily want to just wear that Becca primer every single time with this so this is kind of just a problematic product for me and it's not my favorite like I thought it would be and it's like $44 so that's a little bit sad okay and the last item is and it's not a I don't okay I don't hate this product I just don't see the hype around it I guess this is the Mac prep and prime fix plus and this is a gold light edition but this goes for the original because I have the smaller original one too honestly the gold light one you could just get the original. I see no difference at all. I don't see any like gold aspect to it or like glossy look to it or anything like that. But 
the thing that I don't like about this is I don't see that it does anything except for kind of refresh my face like a little water spray and the spritzer on it is so it's like a like a water hose that just like spits on you I don't know and the sprayer on this is not that great and people love this but but if you just want a nice water spray I honestly suggest getting the morphe continuous setting spray this is so freaking refreshing it feels just so good going onto your face like it feels like the lightest airiest most amazing sprayer ever and it's half the price of this so so honestly if you just want something that is a, like a nice spray that just feels good and refreshing on your face is really good because I honestly feel like this doesn't do anything to help your makeup last longer or prime your skin or prep it or whatever just like this one this one honestly just makes the powder look go away and it feels really good and that's what I use this for but I don't really like the nozzle too too much okay well those were all of the items that it seems like everyone kind of loves and like bows down to a little bit but there's just some problematic issues with some of them for me and they're not my most favorite items in my makeup collection so let me know in the comments below what items you feel everyone loves and you're just kind of like why did I buy this it's not that great so <laughs> let me know in the comments below thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video Bye.